Hello again. As we approach the 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time, something struck me about the readings that connected it with the celebration of the 100th anniversary of the birth of St. John Paul the Great. St. Barbara's Catholic Church in Cleveland, Ohio is privileged to have among the relics of uh, the saints, the relic of St. John Paul II, which is displayed in a very special, uh, we call it ostensorium, in a special cabinet in the church itself near the, near the main altar of the church. This relic, which is part of the bloodied cassock of the Pope when he was uh, shot uh, in May, uh, many years ago, during a public audience, reminds us of something about John Paul II. One of the, the great contributions he made to the Catholic community was to focus and to reestablish a clear relationship between the Catholic community and the Jewish community. A relationship that through the centuries was not an easy one. Sadly, it meant much suffering uh, for the Jewish people in Europe, uh, not only church people, but government people, took up uh, a, a cry of we call anti-Semitism and hate for the Jewish people, saying, well, they, they turned their back on Jesus, and we must turn our back on them and get rid of them. And so we might say there was a contempt, not only for the Jewish people, but for everything that was, had to do with the Jews and, uh, and, and their religion. It's really interesting that in today's reading of the 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time, St. Paul writes to uh, the early Christians uh, a segment about his feelings about his own people. Now, if you remember, he's a devout Jew. He came to believe in Jesus. He came to preach Jesus. He suffered for Jesus. And it was sometimes coming from the hands of his, his own people. And yet, St. Paul writes these very moving words. He says, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and anguish in my heart. I have great sorrow and anguish. What is the anguish and the sorrow? It's that, the, that his people would not accept widely his teaching about Jesus the Messiah. And then he says something that's so extreme, it almost takes us off guard. He says, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. It's, it's we call a rhetoric, rhetorical flourish in language. I mean, it's obviously not going to happen. But he's saying, I, I would just give up everything if my own people could just believe as deeply as I do in Jesus. And even after this confession of sorrow and, and anguish of heart, he makes a very interesting statement. He, he clarifies it that even though they have not accepted as he has accepted Jesus as the Messiah and the Lord, that there's something about them that's still marvelous. They are Israelites, not Israelis. That's a, that's a, that's a citizen of a country or a state, but Israelites, meaning those that were the ones that went through the desert with God, chosen to be his people. Theirs is, he says, the adoption. What kind of adoption? Adoption to be God's people. Theirs is the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship in the temple, and the promises. Theirs, the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. St. Paul then reiterates that there's a connection here between him and his people still, and even in a very real way between us and the Jewish people always will be a reconnection because in the flesh came Jesus Christ. He came of uh, a, a Jewish mother. He came of a, a Jewish world. He came of the Jewish people. He taught in their synagogues. He preached. Uh, he believed deeply. 
uh, in the message of Moses and Abraham, yes, uh, we believe as Christians, he adds something to that. He develops something further in, in, a, in a true and new covenant. But that covenant has never been revoked. Never been revoked by God. St. John Paul II was clear in that teaching. And he actually, he, he actually, in a very real sense, challenged some of our, our teachers and priests and bishops on this issue because they just couldn't accept it. But he understood, maybe more clearly than anyone else, what St. Paul was writing in these words in the Romans. There was sorrow and anguish in his heart. And our attitude to the Jewish people must always be one of love, maybe also a painfulness that they cannot join us in understanding how the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has manifested himself in, in Jesus Christ. And yet, there must always be love and not hate in our hearts for the Jewish people. God bless you now.